Hello and welcome to Vitality, Women Leading Audaciously. Today, my honored guest is Marcy McKenna, and I'm so excited to have her here. She does something that, uh, oh, actually, I'm going to let her tell you. Marcy, could you tell us your story? Tell us why you're here, um, how you got to be here, and what, you know, what it is that you do in the world. Sure. Um, yes, my name is Marcy McKenna, and I wear a lot of different hats in my world, um, which is why I was so drawn to you and to, to being on the show with you, because I know um, what that feels like to feel overwhelmed and unbalanced and all of those things. Um, I, I, I really sort of have two careers. Um, one of them happened organically from the other. And um, the primary one is that I develop products um, for the home shopping world. So I have a, an exclusive line of products on HSN and it is um, home and travel products that are um, really designed to keep you organized and to make life easier, but in a really beautiful way. I was feeling like so many of the organizational type products on the market are sort of utilitarian and you know not necessarily aesthetically pleasing or stylish. Um, and I just, I've been, I was born into a family of inventors. And so inventing has sort of been part of my life for as long as I can remember. And it's just sort of how my mind works that I'm constantly thinking of better ways to do things or to improve products or, um, you know, streamline routines, you name it. And so I had been keeping a white binder for years of all of my ideas. And I just thought someday I'm going to dust this binder off and I'm going to take one of those ideas and turn it into a product and hopefully a career. And if I don't, I'm going to hand this binder off to one of my three kids or all of my three kids. And maybe they would do that someday. Um, but as often happens, life happens. And, um, I was a stay at home mom and, um, my life was my three kids and still is my three kids. And I have one that, um, is special needs. He was born with something called Williams syndrome. And, um, my husband is in the entertainment in industry and his business took a big turn. He's a writer and the, um, the riders went on strike and it was sort of an indefinite period of time and we're watching our bank account go down 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 and i'm you know with my special needs child and you know little young kids and i just thought that now is the time for me to dust that binder off and see what i can do and serendipitously the night that i made that decision i was online um searching to make sure i wasn't taking stealing someone's idea with the idea that i wanted to launch and i came across um an invention reality show that Kelly Ripa was doing with HSN. And she was looking for female inventors only. And the winner would have her product manufactured, marketed, and sold on HSN. Um, and in fact, the winner would be on HSN selling it live herself. And so I thought, well, I'm going to kick fear to the curb and I'm going to go for it. And I did. And long story short, it was a wonderful experience. And I did end up win being the winner. And so that opened that home shopping world door. Um, but I would say probably opening the door was all that it did. Literally, it was a, a major uphill climb with lots of obstacles in the way. And here I am 12 years later, and now I have um, market designed, marketed, and sold over 30 different products. And I'm loving it. I, I love inventing. I love creating and designing. Um, and during the pandemic, this this is my segue into my second sort of career, but it's more of a passion project than it is a career. Um, I did have some time to slow down because HSN is in Florida and I live in California. So pre-pandemic, I was flying back and forth a lot. Um, and I started thinking about how I can give back to the inventor community that I feel like I've had some success and what could I do? And so I started doing a little research and that's when I came across the statistic that um, at the time, only 7% of, of application or patent applications that are filed in America are done so by women. And that was to me just, my jaw was on the floor. I thought there had to be a mistake. It must be at least 27. And even that was ridiculous. Yeah. But I dug deeper and sure enough, that is the accurate statistic. Actually today, I think it's up to 8%. So we're making some progress. Mm -hmm. So um, I founded something called the Women Inventors Club. And um, it is on, it's a Facebook group and that there's no cost to join, but I, I, I love it. It's, there's about 500 females on there now that have product ideas and are kind of, you know, um, wanting to take the leap, but 
not knowing where to start. And um, like me, I was very intimidated when I started in the inventing world because it was very male dominated and I didn't feel like I was taken seriously. And um, it was just a major uphill battle. And so I thought if I can create this world, this community where women can feel safe to share ideas and to support one another and kind of lock arms and help each other to bring our ideas to life and to, to you know, take that leap and as I always say, kick fear to the curb and just go for it. I love and it. And so it's, mm. it's really, yeah, it's very, um, it's very inspiring to me every single day when I'm on, you know, going back and forth with the women and um, hearing their ideas and just seeing them go back and forth with each other is wonderful. So it's, yeah, it's something like, that really. It's like, is it worth it? You know, like there's so much we're dealing with as women, mothers and, and wives and with our, you know, sustaining the family and all the demands. And it's like, where would be time to cultivate an idea like that or have the faith in ourselves that we could make it um, successful. Yes. And then the, like you said, an uphill battle, that's really, you know, what it felt like, you know, I was in the fashion industry for many years. Um, it's just the last 10 years that I've been in this, you know, health coaching industry. That's always been my passion. It's my master's and bachelor's mm. is in, is in nutrition. And I've always just been fascinated by theology and spirituality and all, you know, change methodology. Um, but when you talk about inventing, I mean, we basically would invent our collections, you know, every year, mm -hmm. special buttons, special stitching, special fabrics and things like that. Um, and boy, oh boy, I mean, there's so many details. Yes. Trademark. And that's such a good Patterns. point. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Never. Yeah. There's a lot, to, there's a lot to it. And I think that therein lies one of the main reasons that so few women do take that leap is they it feels so daunting and so overwhelming. And they just think, how could I possibly turn this into something that would be on the store shelf or nowadays online? Um, and so what I really try to do in helping them is just to, to chunk it down and to break it into steps that are achievable and um, to kind of walk through that with them and them with each other. I love it. And it's so doable. It's not rocket science. Right. It's not. Granted, some it inventions really are, but, no, but right, yeah, no, but most yeah. of the time. It's just, it's just yeah. like, you know, just follow through and then attention to detail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> attention to detail. Yes. <laughs> that will bite you without that, for sure. You know, it's interesting because there's like two different qualities. Like one is the visionary creative. And then you've got to have like the technical brain to deal with like all of the details, all of the logistics mm -hmm. and, 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 and small things. I mean, have you met people or do people, I should say this, do people, women uh, in this case, need to have both of those skill sets? Or do you find that people usually surround themselves with the, the other more technical uh, people if they're the visionary? That is such a great question. And um, I really believe that right now is the best time ever to be an inventor or a product developer or a designer. Um, there are so many resources out there just at our fingertips with you know the Google search bar that were not available to me, you know, 12 years ago when I started. Right, and right. so there is so, so many free tools out there to help you do what you need to do. There's so much information on the internet that you can tap into at no cost right. that will really help you get there and help you learn what you didn't know going in. Um, and I talk to my women about the importance of a team because I do think that in this day and age, especially with the pandemic, we are so disconnected. We are, we do feel alone a lot of times, especially I think bringing a product to market, it, it can be a very lonely journey because you're, you're just sitting by yourself at home with the computer. And it's so easy, I think, to get distracted and to get off track and to not follow through on what you're dreaming of. Um, and when you have a team or a support system that holds you accountable, I mean, I know for me, even just having a social media person running that, I mean, I've got to give her what she needs to do her job. Without her, if I was just doing it on my own, I might go, oh, I'll do that next week. Or, oh, I'll do that. But she's counting on me. So because of that, it forces me to put one foot in front of the other every single day. And so that to me is really instrumental. If you truly 
want to make something happen, having a team of some sort, and it could be just a support system. It could be, there are a lot of inventor clubs out there. There are, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook groups are just plentiful yeah. right now. Because yeah, you but, have to put time and money in before you see the results. And there, it requires a lot of faith and commitment yes. and follow through and consistency, doesn't it? Yeah. And I guess I would say going back to the idea that this is a good time to do it when I talk about um, or when you ask the question about, uh, do you have to have both sides? You have to have all of those, that to all, all tool sets to make it happen. I also think that outsourcing right now and using freelancers to do all those jobs that you you might not be great at is a really great option. And I, I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. If I need drawings for my patent, I mean, previously you would have either hired a Buku Bucks attorney to make it happen, or you would have tried to do it yourself. But now I can go on to Fiverr or Upwork and I can hire someone in, you know, that same day. And the amount of money that it costs is so minuscule for what really you get. Point. Yeah, it's a really, yeah. really valid point. I love that. So you're a busy woman, you've, you know, self made woman. I mean, following the, the signs, uh, you're a mom. <laughs> You had to kind of pull your bootstraps up and, and uh, save your family, it sounds like, to a certain degree. How do you balance it all? I mean, what is your uh, system that you use to, to find balance? So I don't know that it's ever possible to truly balance. I don't know that if anyone ever really gets to that point where it's perfection. Yeah, it's because I, I ask that question of a lot of um, female powerhouses. I'm always wanting to know how they do with that have kids also. And I, I do hear that. And it, it, makes me feel better to know that, okay, it's not, you know, sometimes everything can look so perfect on the, you know, on social media and it, it is difficult. But I think um, one thing I've learned over the years is the importance of prioritizing ourselves. And it does sound so cliche and you've probably heard it a million times, but putting that oxygen mask on yourself first so that you can help everybody else um, is just so true. And I know that if I'm not taking care of me physically, emotionally, spiritually, um, I'm not good for anybody, you know? Right. And so that really took me time because I thought I need to take care of everybody. So I would, you know, be up till two and three in the morning trying to get it all done. Um, and that's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day I'm so exhausted that I'm not probably really being a good mom or being, right. you know, at my personal best in terms of my career. Um, so there was a point when I really did have to slow down and really relook at what I was doing and reshape um, what my everyday looked like. And so for me, it was realizing that um, I'm, a, I'm a big goal setter, a real big believer in that. And I am a planner junkie. I love my planners. I've tried them all and, and I finally have a system that I love. But when I sit down to to plug my things into my planner, the very first things I do, which is so goes against what I've always done, but I do plug my workouts in. I do plug a um, very specific time with my kids in. Mm -hmm. Like I used to, I'll fit all that stuff in when I have time, but the, the bigger, what I thought were the bigger, more important things always came first. Mm -hmm. And I realized that without those things in place, mm. the other stuff doesn't happen nearly as well. And so right. that was a game changer for me. Mm. Um, That's great. And that, and, and part of that plugging in is what time that you go to sleep. And when you plug in, that was really hard for me because I always thought, well, when everybody else is asleep and I do still do this to a degree, um, that's when I can get everything done because there's just never enough hours in the day. Well, and interruptions, you know, it's like, you know, if you oh, get yeah. up early, there's a lot less interruptions, but I love what you're saying. And, you know, regardless of whether we've heard it a thousand times or a million times or not, we need the reminder because we're always mm -hmm. somehow feeling a little bit guilty, um, you know, making time for ourselves. Sometimes yes. we're even called selfish for doing that. Right. Um, but you know, you're absolutely right. And, and if anyone's listening to this right now, and they're struggling to prioritize themselves or struggle or feeling guilty because they're not prioritizing their kids. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it's non-negotiable. Like, you yes. know, like you, it's like on the calendar. I mean, I know the things on my calendar are non-negotiable. So why should my personal time, or my family time be any different? Right. Well said, that's exactly how I feel. And that's funny. Cause that is, that is what I use that term non-negotiable. The, what are my non-negotiables and, and 
plug those in first. And one yeah. of those for me became that sleep piece because I wasn't allowing myself because I thought that's when it all had to happen. And then I realized when I, someone told me to do that. And so I tried it and I realized how integral that was to everything else. So it's, you know, lights out for me now it's 11. Um, we but can, it, you know, whatever doesn't get done. It. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it, sleep without sleep, like, forget it. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Yes. So it's true. just not. Yeah. So I love that you emphasize that. Um, so when you're feeling kind of low on energy um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you're just, it's been a busy day, a busy week, <laughs> a busy year. <laughs> What is your go-to uh, to kind of restore yourself and reboot your health and, and your vitality? Um, I do love to exercise. Um, so for me, uh, we live on Balboa Island and it's just really beautiful. And so I love um, taking a walk around the island and um, I'll do it a couple times and just taking in the, the outdoors and the scenery and the, you know, the fresh air. Um, my favorite me time in the world is when I get to go down. Um, there's a little sort of beach at the end of our street on the bay. It's not, a, you know, it's not a true beach, but just sitting there with my dog by myself. Every my whole family knows that that's me time as, as much as I love them. And I do sometimes want them to come after, but I'll go sit at sunset in my beach chair with my dog and my planner. And I turn off my phone and I just sit and I kind of reflect on the day and I think about the next day and I just take time to just breathe and just um I try to always remind myself to take time for gratitude when I'm when I'm at in my happy place doing that um I, I sometimes I forget to do that and I'll wonder why I'm not in a good place for a while and I'll think gosh I really haven't been doing that gratitude and so it really is just such an important thing. Um, I'm trying to teach my 15 year old daughter that because I think younger or teenagers can get so sort of cynical and snarky. And but if you start each day for me, I end each day with it. But for her, I'm trying to get her to start each day with those thoughts of gratitude because it's amazing how it can change your entire mind frame for the whole day. And it can Changes yeah. absolutely everything. Actually, my daughter is the one that reminds me of it now. And I think that she made that decision that it was something worthwhile doing because she felt like what you said, it, 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 she felt the change and shift in her mm -hmm. own kind of psyche and energy. Um, so she yes. really understood it from like a very deep place. It's not like this uh, superficial gratitude, like, oh yeah, I'm thankful for this or thankful for that. It's, it's like really deep felt sense. And that that's so much more profound in terms of what it has to offer you. I feel like it's become a little bit cliche. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, it's not necessary, necessarily like that. But I have a 17 year old, so I totally get it. When she was 15, it was kind of like, yeah, mom, whatever. <laughs> now yes, she's like you reminding me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and social media does not help that. It actually, that was our big topic at the dinner table last night. My older son, who just left um, to go back to college today, brought it up to her and said he noticed it in her and that she was starting to get and he said i he just swore off of TikTok because he's watched you know he's learned just how negative it can be in their world and he said i yeah. think i think it's because of social media that that you're starting to um have such a negative kind of attitude on life and so that really struck her and so we talked about that gratitude piece and about how that's a good a good tool to get you on the right track and and i think you're right what you're saying about your daughter is that when it becomes really ingrained and because I think you, when you start out doing it, it can be sort of an exercise of sorts that you're doing, but once you do it enough, then it becomes just part of you. And that's when it really, I think can make a, a real big difference in your life. Absolutely. For those of you who can't see who are just listening, uh, Marcy is a gorgeous woman. She oh. doesn't look like she has, you know, children uh, the age she does. And she's, she's just full of vitality. Her eyes are bright and her skin is clear and she's just glowing. And so um, folks, you know, you. listen to her words of wisdom. And honestly, I want to join your Facebook club because I'm, I'm curious about mm -hmm. which things, you know, I'm, I'm such a practical person. Like I would want to be sure there's demand for the products. Cause a lot of the products that I, <laughs> that I want to do, I'm not sure there's demand. It's like, there should be demand, but there isn't adequate demand. Actually, <laughs> there's like these, these gaps in, um, 
the readiness for, for certain things and products and services that I envision, um, and like the apparent value of it, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. health coaching, for example, there, there's tens of thousands of health coaches, maybe even more on the market. There's a need for health coaching because health and preventative diseases have never been so high. Um, but the health insurance companies aren't paying for it. So it's out of pocket. So it's like the systems aren't in place to actually supply the demand for both sides of the market, the person who needs it and the person uh, who is it, if that makes right. sense. And I know yes. we're talking, a lot of what you're saying is I think tangible products, but I think right now there's also informational products and even um, you know this integration of wearable devices and lifestyle change for better health outcomes You know, is really also a product, so to say. Yes. Well, that's, it's interesting that you say that because I really struggle with calling it the Women Adventures Club because I think it's, the thought is that it is just a product, that it has to be this thing that you're bringing to market and putting on the store shelf. But it's really, as, as I'm getting more and more into it, it's really about, I mean, like you said about your fashion line, that's an invention. Like everything is an invention. So in an idea of a business idea like yours, it, everything that we do inside the Women Adventures Club really does apply to all of those things. And what you said about wanting to know if it's an idea that, you know, that if that the timing is right and that, you know, the value is there for the customer is music to my ears. And that's the first thing that I try to help people with is that product validation, because so many people just are certain. I love hearing that you question it because it's a good question to ask because they love it so much. They're certain that it's going to be successful. So they don't take those steps to really validate and really um, do the market research that's necessary before spending a lot of time and money. And I see so many women and men dive in with these ideas and they are spending tens of thousands of dollars on, you know, stuff that doesn't need to be spent. And that's another one of my quests, but, um, Oh yeah. So really validate the process. That's really smart. Yeah, it doesn't, you don't need to spend a ton of money to bring a product idea to market. And, and, you know, you've seen those invention submission companies, um, you know, late night commercials. And I just, as I've gotten into this, I've seen so many people taken for tens of thousands of dollars and yeah. it's heartbreaking. Yeah. And so I'm just trying to like spread the word on, you don't need that. You can do this. And there are so many tools and resources out there that don't cost you all of this money. But to your point, you want to make sure that the idea that you have is something that will resonate in the market before you dive in. And there are so many ways to do that that are not that it. difficult. I love it. Well, yeah. it's been such a joy to be here with you today. And um, how um, how can people find you? Would you like them to come to the Facebook group the best way? That's great. I mean, if there are women out there, and, and like I said, I'm probably going to change the name of it sometime soon to, to because I do want it to reach anyone that has any kind of idea that they want to go for Mm. to help them find success with it and to give them the courage and the strength and the support that they need to just, you know, to, to leap, to do it. Um, but right now it is, if you go onto Facebook and, um, well, actually, if you go to my website, which is marcymckenna.com, um, that you'll see all my products and all that there, but there is a tab that says inventors on it. And when you click that, um, you'll see the information to be able to join the Facebook group. Um, but it is called the Women Adventures Club, the Facebook group. And I love it. And Thank you so much. Lots of great resources to help everybody. And yeah, it's amazing. Really fun. Yeah. Any last words of wisdom for our listeners? Gosh, um, you know, being that it's a new year, I know everybody thinks of it differently, but I really do get excited about a new year and, and the possibilities. And so I just, um, whatever you do, you know, I would just encourage everybody to, to dream big, but not just dream. Actually, you know, I just want to encourage you to go for it. And in doing that, one saying that I have is that, um, I think the real saying is a dream or a, a goal without a plan is just a dream. But I say that a goal without your why, a goal without a why is just a dream or it's just a wish. So whatever you do before you dive into it, if you know what your why is, why exactly you're doing it, and you really take time to understand that at a deep level, I think you're gonna have success no matter what. And if you remind yourself of that why every single day, I mean, I had a 
big why when I when I started with you know panicking about my family and my special needs son and I just there was no plan B I needed to do this and I was going to do it come hell or high water and we all have a why um, of some sort and so I just challenge everybody to wh whatever your dream is that find that why and then harness that energy and, and just go out there and make it happen. Oh, I love it. So beautiful. Such wise, wise words. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marcy. Uh-huh. Thank you.